I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, I'd like to start before we do roll call to make this announcement. This meeting is a special meeting to comply with open meeting laws. This meeting was rescheduled for Monday, April 26, 2021, due to the lack of a quorum being present that evening. And now if we go to roll call. Charles Blacklands? Here. Kevin Boyles? Here. Tom Hagelin? Ruth Nelson? Here. Bob Nystrom? Here. Jana Shogren? We have four present for okay. a quorum. So we do have a quorum present. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to start the meeting by uh, announcing that due to the current federal and state emergency declarations, uh, the Minnesota Directive to Residents to Stay at Home and Guidance about limiting person-to-person -person contact due to the COVID-19 pandemic this meeting will be conducted in, in accordance with Minnesota statute 13D.021. Um, also, I would like to read um, that because this is a special meeting, we will have no public comment as today's meeting is a special school board meeting. Also, we will pull the minutes of the April 12, 2021 regular meeting and take action at the next regular meeting, which is May 10th, Monday, May 10th. Okay. Um, and so you have the agenda in front of you. We need to make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So move. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Director Boyle, second by Director Blacklands to approve the agenda as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. No. Oh, we don't do roll I thought when we didn't have people present. Or is that just? But there's nobody on line. Oh, gotcha, okay. Right. Okay, so yeah. we'll take the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Motion passes. District recognition, Superintendent Larson. All right. It is really an honor for me today to recognize um, the individuals that we're going to uh, be talking about uh, the, today at noon. I just about said this evening, but it's not this evening. <laughs> but we have the most... Um, Honorable community. It, it just, it almost brings tears to my eyes every time when I think about how generous our community is. And the next uh, two recognitions that I'm going to bring forward today are just two extremely awesome examples of our generous community that we have and their commitment to Brainerd Public Schools. So I want to begin today by thanking Dutch and Irma Cragen as they donated $100,000 to the Brainerd Public Schools for the purchase of a grand, concert grand piano to be stored at the new performing arts facility attached to Brainerd High School. This piano is a beautiful nine foot ebony Steinway Model D, which is considered the gold standard for pianos across the globe. This instrument will support all of the performing ensembles at Brainerd High School and at the Performing Arts Center. Over 500 students each year participate in music and will experience this world-class instrument. Furthermore, this piano will be utilized by the Lakes Area Music Festival, as well as be available to all other community ensembles that choose to use our new facility. Thank you very much to Dutch and Irma Cragen. Also, we would like to take this time to thank Steve and Cindy Clow and Just for Kicks. The Clows have donated $75,000 to Independent School District 181 to be used towards upgrades at the Brainerd High School multi-purpose room and to support additional flooring to support our athletes and our activity partners. Once again, thank you to our generous community for seeing to it that we provide these opportunities to our children. Um, it is with heartfelt acceptance that we accept these donations. And finally, congratulations to the Brainerd Knowledge Bowl team. Statewide, there were 994 Knowledge Bowl teams 
and 48 of those teams qualified for the state tournament. Brainerd Public Schools qualified two teams, and those teams finished 15th and 21st place, respectively. The 15th place team members were Jackson Callian, Carlton Anderson, Reed Bokerman, Colton Doles, and Noah Joke. In 21st place were Gabe Maurer, Charles Johnson, Merrill Tiganoa, Jackson Dwyer, and Jonathan Larson. Congratulations to our students and to our coaches for an incredible, knowledgeable season. And that ends my report. Thank you. I would also personally like to thank the Cragen family and the Claw family for these very generous gifts. A lot of times in the community, people don't realize some of the people that donate behind the scenes many times. In this case, it was, you know, public. But they have time and time again done things like this, and it's a recognition of our facilities and how they want to enhance them. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, I'm very happy to make this announcement. Uh, I would like to say congratulations to our superintendent, Lane Larson, for being elected as president-elect to the Minnesota Association of School Administrators. This is a three-year term representing Brainerd Public Schools in PK through 12 public education throughout the state of Minnesota. Brainerd has not had a superintendent serve as the Massa president since the 1916-17 school year. And that person was Wilbur Cobb, who was the longest acting superintendent. So that was over 100 years ago. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. OK, uh, we're not uh, doing public input or approval of minutes. Uh, next is the consent calendar. You should have all had a chance to read that. Um, is there a motion? I'll move the approval of the consent calendar. I'll second. OK, we have a motion by Director Nelson, second by Director Blacklands to approve the consent calendar as presented. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Next, we'll have the present the uh, COVID-19 update. Well, we're waiting for them to come up. I just want to acknowledge that in the consent calendar was a gentleman being hired today named Mike Smith, who will be the new technical director of the Performing Arts Center. And we are just really excited about the expertise that he brings to us. He's worked at Mesa in professional theater, Mesa, Arizona, <laughs> and uh, is coming to us from Zimmerman, Minnesota right now, and is just really thrilled about this opportunity. So we know he's the right person at the right time to help lead that incredible and very technical uh, facility. And so we're excited to have him aboard. He'll be Thank here you. on May 10th. I shared well, it with you yesterday. OK. Um, I shared so it from will he Lane's be in front to of the me. school board on May 10th. Um, oh. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, okay. He might. It'd be we'll nice see to if meet he him. could. Yeah, because I asked if he could make it today and he couldn't. But yeah, maybe the May 10th he can, or for sure the other meeting in okay. in May, and we can have him because that's during the day. So yeah, I saw that. I was wondering if it was our retired choir director. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 he, he sent me a note. Is this our Mike Smith? <laughs> so huh. it's our new Mike Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Two forty-nine. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon. Um, hopefully, this will be a pretty quick presentation. We're going in the right direction. We're starting to see cases in the district start to go down again, um, which has also been apparent in our number of close contacts. So our numbers are going in the right way. Um, this is kind of a graph with our updates as far as what the case rates are looking like in Crow Wing County. This is, as you know, a kind of a two week lag. Um, as we look at current timing, um, we're starting to see that go back down again, which is very good news. Um, so hopefully they'll continue in that directory, trajectory. And Jan, excuse me on that last slide, um, it ended on 410. Is there any data in between today and then? Well, this is the official counts that they provide, the 14-day counts in school. So that's kind of what we've always used as our graphing. Um, you know, when I looked at the beginning of the week, we're still like in the Crow Wing County, I think we're back down in the upper 50s. Um, you know, as a district, we go over three different counties. So our, that number is a little bit higher right now. I think we're still in the 70s, but it is starting to come back down. You're seeing that I think right. we kind of peaked last week or the week before, um, when right around the time we had the last board meeting, we were seeing a lot of cases and a lot of close contacts. 
but since that time, things have quieted down considerably. So we and hope that. Yeah, continues. and again, the trend seems to be household. Yep. Hmm. Somebody in the household tests positive, and we have the whole household testing positive, which is why the county is also seeing the increase in numbers, like Michelle Moritz said. Mm -hmm. We are not seeing when a student is testing positive or a staff. When we quarantine, we're not seeing multiple people within that quarantine test positive. There seems to be a consistent correlation with some type of family household exposure, which is why the household quarantine remains in place at an yep. extended time of 14 days. Yep. So right now, and we had to put a cutoff time on this because these numbers change by the minute. Mm -hmm. um, so we did it as of last night. Um, so currently at that time, we had 13 staff in quarantine and three positives currently out. For students, 178 in quarantine with 10 of those being positive cases. Any hospitalization? Not that I'm aware of during this time frame. We have in the past, but I haven't heard of any significant cases recently. And our peak was a little over 200 students? At some point, in uh, we were over 300 and I think 360 about a week and a half ago. Okay, so, yeah. so it's come down considerably. We're about half of where we were at two weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, yep. Which is very nice. Yep, staff has remained right around, you know, between 10 and 15. Um, we started out much lower and then we're kind of growing a little bit, but it has, it's nowhere near where we were in fall and winter time, where we were in triple digits with staff too. So we're feeling pretty good that we can successfully make through the, yeah. The rest of if, if they've been 18. vaccinated, they don't have to go in quarantine. Right? If they're close contacts, they do not. Okay. Um, but if they have symptoms, they do. Okay. And they still need to continue to test and follow that procedure. Um, there has been some changes in the guidance in regard to face coverings. You may have heard that the CDC and now the MDH are kind of loosening some restrictions as far as face coverings go due to the trends coming down across the country. Right now, it is still required for all people um, at all times during practices and games, except now they've opened up the following exceptions. So outdoor activities, when you're actively practicing or playing outside, the athletes no long longer need to wear those face coverings. Gymnastics and cheerleading, if safety concerns exist, um, again, they can temporarily take off those face coverings. And then people who swim, dive, or participate in water sports should not wear the cloth face covering, which I think that one has been in place for a bit of time, but they just reiterated in their last guidance that came out. And then same with wrestling. Um, that one had been loosened a, a while back because it was really difficult for wrestlers to be able to wear a face covering. So they just included that in their last update as well. However, when students are like in dugouts or if they're sitting in a golf cart next to one another or if they're at track and they're waiting for an event and they're in a group, they have to have their face coverings on during any yep. non-active time. Including coaches and refs and all of that yep. as well. Yep. And spectators. Um, so looking ahead, we kind of reviewed last board meeting, kind of the plans for the spring events and activities, um, postponing those a bit until we were waiting for those numbers to come down. We continue to um, schedule these events and celebrations, but we're making sure that those safety protocols remain in place and that we're making sure capacity limits are also being followed. And then we just continue to request support from staff, students, and community members to help us stay in person throughout the remainder of the school year with this following the outlined um, safety protocols that we've been discussing all year. And vaccinations continue to be available in our area for anyone ages 16 and older. And there's a lot of information out there on how they can get access to that. It's pretty much across all medical providers at this point, several pharmacies. So if people are interested, they can reach out to their medical providers. And many are now providing walk-up. Mm -hmm. So we had a huge walk-in clinic at Essentia on Wednesday and this past Saturday. So more places are opening up, including some local pharmacies, where if you want to mm -hmm. walk in and receive a vaccine, just like your flu shot, Yep. That availability is now there too. So with counter reports that there is an abundance of vaccine available. Mm -hmm. So nobody should be without vaccine if they're seeking one. Mm. Yep. And we're still limiting um, visitors. Um, as some of these celebrations start to occur, that's where some of the visitors and things are starting to come in at a little bit limited capacity. Um, again, we're trying to preserve that as much as we can to try to get to those end of the year celebrations. When do you foresee the children under 16 to be able to be vaccinated? I, we don't have an idea. I know that they're looking at, I think the period from 12 and older now to see if that, when that can safely be opened up. But I'm, my guess is, you know, there's, there's a lot of safety concern as you get younger and younger. So mm -hmm. they're doing their due diligence to see, make sure if they're providing it that 
you know, to that point, too, I, over the last week and a half, uh, I was in five of our six elementary schools, uh, the Brainerd Learning Center and Forest View. And what I would tell you is the staff and the kids are doing an outstanding job mm -hmm. of complying with all of this stuff and really taking it seriously mm -hmm. and doing their, their part, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was really, really impressed to see that. Yeah, and there was concern at the beginning of the year of the little kids being able to handle the mass and to be able to learn to social distance, and they've been great. They've been great. I mean, it yeah, was... Yeah, it's been amazing. Yep, I mean, in, inside Forest View in the front office, there's a basket of masks, and every, you know, mm -hmm. as they come in, and I was there when they came in in the morning on Monday, mm -hmm. and the ones that didn't have one come right in the office, grab one, and off to class they go. Nobody yeah. had to tell them to do anything. They've got it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they haven't complained at all. Kids haven't. Well, and we... And honestly, our families have been awesome because we do have some students with medical conditions mm -hmm. and they have worked diligently with the physicians in town mm -hmm. to try to come up with alternatives that are going to be um, workable and feasible to meet the health needs of the students. So in each situation, outside of some of our students with more significant disabilities, we've been able to figure those situations out for our students. So when you look at almost 6,700 students, that's very impressive with the commitment from our families too. Mm -hmm. Very grateful. Yep. Because you two are the district's COVID-19 experts, if you could make a prediction for the first day of school in September, how do you see that happening today based on the information that you have today? That feels well, like a trick question. Yes. Oh. <laughs> don't predict. Will yeah, there be mask wearing? You know, I don't think we can because there's so many variables. Like when you okay. talk about vaccine availability, they are looking at that 12 to 16 range. That's a big um, player as people continue yeah. to get vaccinated. Um, you know, we're now hitting the beautiful time in Minnesota where our windows can be open again and people can be back outside. That all plays um, into it. We know it's not going away. Mm -hmm. um, so honestly, I think as your COVID coordinating experts, we're just anxious to get our kids and our staff safe through the mm -hmm. end of the year um, and haven't even let our brains go to the fall quite yet because we're so focused on. Yeah, there's so the many different now. things that could happen between now and then. It's mm -hmm. difficult to... And any time I think we try to predict, we've never been right. So I won't even take a gander. <laughs> yeah. no. Just one other question. Um, one of the things I heard actually on the radio this morning is that the spread that happens with sports teams is not happening during the play or the practice of sports. It's happening after, after event get-togethers or gatherings. Are our coaches aware of that and really just... They, our coaches have been phenomenal. I mean, when we need to... to uh, contact trace the coaches have followed every protocol they know kids they know what's happened they've consciously written practices to make sure kids are active and to make sure kids are apart that's why we're not seeing that contact because they're not i mean right. we we know it's when you're in close contact for more than 15 minutes yeah, so yeah the one sports time is like dug out. it's gathers. been a little tricky you know kids kind of get in a duck out sometimes you you get absent of that but our coaches are really um, asserting that but you're correct you know and the more we're out and the farther apart we are that's where we've been able to see some of these trends go down. Outdoor sports, we're not quarantining. Yeah. Um, like I said, we've had one baseball situation, and it was dugout related. Um, so you can't really. And, the, and it's not our students' faults either. Lots of our kids are asymptomatic. Some of our kids have allergies, so they mm -hmm. think their allergies are kicking in. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's so many variables mm -hmm. that happen, but they've all been um, respectful, responsible. Uh, we continue. It's hard. I mean, kids mm -hmm. have some really important events coming up, and... Um, I really appreciate the families and the staff and the students that are doing their part um, on behalf of all the other colleagues and students they're with. So they've been doing a good job. Hmm. Really good job. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we will have the Blueprint 181 project update from our ICS team. Good afternoon, everyone. I will share my screen here. There we go. Okay. okay. Um, the uh, 181 Brainerd Public Schools bond improvement update for April 26th. Brainerd High School. Uh, project update here, area two signs have uh, been installed and were substantially complete. The auditorium, uh, the theatrical equipment installation has taken place. 
um, and progressing there. Area 10, the pool construction started. Area six, the paint and wall tile and the CTE expansion is taking place. The greenhouse, the footings have started. Now the, the weather is turning in the right direction for us. Uh, area seven, face brick is taking place. And area nine, they're forming footings. And you can see some of the photos on the right of some of the progress. And the next one here, the uh, auditorium, uh, really an impressive space and it's coming together quite nice. So uh, if you haven't seen that yet, uh, I encourage you to when you get the chance. South Campus, project update. Um, Mendoli plumbing plan review is complete. The Mendoli building plan review uh, responses are completed, so they're moving along in that process. The Department of Health has completed their review as well. And the project team is going through submittals and working on procurement there. And then at the progress meeting on the 29th, they'll review a demo plan. Work, work getting queued up over at South Campus. Warrior Early Learning Center, um, they're wrapping up punch list items as, they, uh, as they're available to them. They're working on commissioning of the mechanical systems and the site work. Once the um, road restrictions are off, they will start. I know the road restrictions um, came off in a couple of areas. Uh, Brainerd happens to be right in the middle of where the line breaks. So some projects can start and some are still waiting, but the, the restrictions are coming up quickly. So a lot of that site work is getting started. Garfield Elementary, um, the phase two schedule has been issued. They're working on the material procurement for that, that phase. Uh, Jim Expansion has received the approval and uh, going through the city planning commission. Um, still waiting for plan review from the state. So they're getting close on getting that approved. Um, temp fencing was installed. The site removals will, will begin. Once again, you'll see here the road restrictions. That's the big that's the big item that we're all kind of waiting on to start site work. So that'll uh, that'll get started here if they haven't already. Um, demo of the existing piping in the tunnels is taking place. That's all happening in off however so, so before and after school. And then interior demo is scheduled to begin once student testing has been completed in select areas. So I know that's coming up here in the next day or two, probably the end of this week or the next week. Lowell Elementary, um, the early demolition continues in the lower level. Uh, underground plumbing and mechanical has been completed and poured back. Uh, the athletic flooring was completed. And you can see that in the picture to the right there. That's all lined out and ready. Um, lower level framing activities continued and mechanical, electrical and plumbing activities continued there as well. Uh, getting prepped for drywall to start here, as you can see in that picture. They've got drywall already staged and ready to start one siding some of the walls. So progress is moving along there. Oops. Uh, Riverside. The casework is installed in the music rooms uh, and the other six rooms that we got early access to. Um, mechanical electrical plumbing systems were installed. Uh, those, those systems have been ongoing here for quite a while and, and keeping up with the progress of the job. Uh, as well as some of the finishes. So painting continued in the storage rooms and classrooms, and they've been working on the ACT ceilings. Like they've got a lot of the, the pads or the ACT tiles installed now as well. Um, and flooring is actually uh, doing better than next week. They have actually started today. So they're installing some flooring there now. Again, progress moving along in some of the areas that we got early access to and uh, things are progressing. That was uh, fairly quick, but any questions about general progress updates for uh, the project? I just wanted to say that we had a tour of the Performing Arts Center before this meeting and it, it looks fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the public is gonna be really proud of that facility. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Anyone else? Thanks, Mark. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you. Uh, next, um, well, we, we don't have any action items. Um, informational, our business manager, Marcy Lord. Good afternoon. Uh, the financial report's in your packet. Uh, nothing really new to note. Food service and community ed are still tracking under due to COVID and everything that's happening in those programs. Um, I did just want to note that uh, insurance applications for li liability cyber have been submitted, so I'll be reporting at a following board meeting on what those rates look like. 
And then we did have a benefits committee meeting last week and um, the proposed was uh, presented and that recommendation will come at the next board meeting. Is there any questions? Do you know yet what the percent will be for next year on the benefits? There's actually gonna be a um, reduction on two plans. The other plans will be zero. Oh, great. Yep. That's great news. Yeah. Any other questions? Right. We have Thank a you. quiet group today. <laughs> um, next, we have the superintendent's report, Lane Larson. All right. Um, one thing that I'd like to add to Mercy's report is, um, as you know, we've been working diligently on the budget. And so we, th we believe that we're completed with our elementary budget meetings, and we will be having our secondary budget meetings uh, beginning next week. And um, I'm really proud of our team that, well, first of all, that we've um, had some federal dollars in which to work with, which have helped us to uh, do some, some work with our title and such. But our team has really come to the table with um, some solutions to some really complex problems. And so um, it's really, uh, we're getting to the point where uh, we're about done with it. There won't have to be a lot of board action because of the fact that we're, uh, like I said, finding complex solutions to these situations. Also, um, the COVID changes, it really, I wanted to just address uh, what Angie and, and Heidi talked about, that they had shared with us as the peak was going up again, that they thought the week of April 20th that we were gonna see it plateau and we are really fortunate that it has done that and that uh, we were able to keep our kids in session. Now we wanna finish strong so that these last 18 days of school that we can prioritize all the exciting things that are going on for our seniors and for our upperclassmen. And so the majority of my report today has to do with the fact that in order to prioritize graduation, we have moved all of our activities so that we're kind of putting it and condensing it into about three weeks. And so if, when you look at the future meetings, you're gonna see that there's a lot going on in the next three weeks um, to try to uh, meet all of the fun activities that our kids do. Um, starting with on May 5th, we'll have senior recognition uh, night. Uh, the Brainerd Public School Foundation sponsors this and that will be held at Forest View Middle School. Um, it won't be at the PAC, um, but they're going to be doing two shifts. At 5.30, they'll be having the A through L group, and at 7.15, they'll be um, hosting the M through Z group. Um, the next day, starting May 6th, next Thursday, will be the first activity that will be held at the Performing Arts Center, and that is the musical Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So there are tickets on the website uh, going to the school district um, website and uh, the show is being held at seven o'clock on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and there's a matinee at two o'clock on Sunday. A uh, regular school board meeting on the 10th, the equity task force will meet at two o'clock on the 11th. On uh, May 19th, we will be having the Fine Arts Awards Banquet and that will also be held at the Performing Arts Center this year and that'll be held at seven o'clock. So all of our Fine Arts recipient winners will be getting their awards and that's always a wonderful night. So we're happy that we can host that again. And I just wanna remind the board that on May 11th, that'll be the last day for seniors in person. However, they will distance learn the 12th, 13th and 14th in order to give them that 10 day window. So hopefully we won't have to quarantine anybody. At least we won't have to quarantine them because of close contacts in school. Also on the 20th of May, we will start our graduations. The LEC graduation will be at noon at LEC and the Brainerd Learning Center graduation will be at four o'clock at Tornstrom Auditorium. Again, they will be um, accommodating for the amount of numbers that we can have in each of those facilities. And then at this point, the Brainerd High School, the last day of school for students is Friday, May 21st. And the Brainerd High School graduation will take place at seven o'clock at Don Adamson Field. Uh, right now, we're hoping that we're going to be able to have one shift and all of our students at the same time. So if the board could make it there by, you know, about 6.30, 6.40, somewhere in there, uh, we'll be ready to 
to host the graduation that night. Um, and then the following night will be prom, the 22nd. So we move the prom until after graduation. And then Monday the 24th at 11 o'clock, there will be um, the groundbreaking for the South Campus of the Brainerd High School, which will be the future LEC Transitions and Stars programs. And then the regular meeting will be held at noon that day, uh, immediately after the groundbreaking. And then on Wednesday the 26th, the Performing Arts Center grand opening will take place at 6 p.m. Um, at the at the pack and right now we can have 355 people So I know yesterday I had the fortunate opportunity to go out and speak again for the first time in over a year And I got to talk to the noon rotary, which was super fun But we know that there will not be enough seats for the number of people that want to come that night and so we are um, working on in the invitation list right now, and uh, they can go online to get tickets. Um, the tickets are free, but we can only give out 355. And so when we meet that number, it's first come, first serve. And so we will have to live within those boundaries. Hopefully the numbers will change between now and then, but at this point, we can have 355 people maximum <clears throat> in that facility. So the board members are assumed to be a part of that? Yes. Okay. Yep. You are you automatically a part yeah. of it. You and your spouses are. And um, we ask that you be there. And um, it'll be all of the board members that have been part of this project since April 10th of 2018. So there'll be a nice group of you with your spouses. And be very exciting. And Bob, I know, will speak on behalf of the board as the chair. And part of the dedication and we'll get that all figured out between now and then. So we've been working hard on it. It's, it's a lot of work. So mm -hmm. that's all. That's what I have in my report. So thank you. That's it. You're welcome. Is there any? Oh, go, did you I was just going to say, as far as the other graduations, the LEC and ELC graduations, we're, we're okay to go to those two or is there a limited number? You know, we should find that out for sure, but I know like the one at Tornstrom we can have, I believe it's 313 people. And so let me check with Jessica. I know she's got almost 60 graduates. Okay. So and, yeah. we'll see how many people yeah, she's on. It would be nice them. to have at least one board member. It would be nice to have board members at these graduations if we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even if you split up a little bit between the two of them. Yeah. So, yeah. And on Oklahoma, yes. just for those, um, if, if, if Carla Johnson was grading me, she would have failed me on buying tickets. Um, <laughs> Director Blacklands alerted me that they were available. And so when you go to the page and you go to buy tickets, you'll see lacrosse. You have to scroll down mm -hmm. to find Oklahoma down underneath, which unfortunately took me about an hour to figure out. So just a little community service I there. I do think it's kind of hard. It's a little bit chaotic to go in there and find exactly what you're looking for tickets because everything, the tickets are there and the pack tickets will be there as well. But we want to send out the invitations first because there's many people that we have to give because of their commitment to it and um, involvement in the process. We want to give them the first opportunity mm -hmm. to order their tickets. So. Okay. Yeah, and I would just like to encourage the public to consider uh, going to Oklahoma. This is a way for people to see the pack even before the grand opening or for people that have a hard time getting into the grand opening. And it w it's a wonderful musical and theatrical yep. performance. And you think about it with four shows times 355 people, you know, you can get a lot of people in there over those four days mm -hmm. to, to see the venue and to just experience it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are going to um, stream the grand opening of the Performing Arts Center. So for those who don't get tickets, they can watch the grand opening if they wish to do that and the dedication of that facility to the district. So be funny. Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. I'll uh, second it. Okay. Motion by Director Blackland, second by Director Boyles to adjourn the meeting. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Those like sign, motion passes.